Right, hello. Um, the Full More Online Hack Day coincides very nicely with us trying to push our final, our new update for LMBits. If you don't know what LMBits is, it's a very easy Lightning Network um, wallet which you can run yourself on your own little server. You can download and run quite easily. You can, uh, with a little bit of building, you could build in the, the ability to have it as a custodial service if you wanted to kind of run your own kind of open node type service, I suppose. Each wallet comes with its own API keys. It's very easy to generate a new wallet. So when you generate a new wallet, you get new API keys and you can, you know, send and receive uh, Bitcoin over Lightning Network through those API keys. It's quite useful for, you know, if you want a service to connect to a wallet and send money to a wallet and, and, and pay from a wallet without expo exposing to too many funds. You can just make a little wallet specifically for a, for a service. What we're going to concentrate on over the hack day um, as well as us lot just trying to get, you know, some of the back end stuff working, um, is uh, rolling out more functionality through our extensions. So when you run LMBits, it's just a bare bones wallet. And then you can add more functionality via extensions. So and there's an extension for minting your own LNURL um, withdraw faucets, uh, like those um, uh, Faucets, Lightning Network faucets you've seen on Twitter. So you can make your own ones of those. There's a, a, an extension for quickly making a point of sale on uh, for, a, for a phone or a tablet, which you could use in a, a shop. Um, and there's an extension for if you have an event like a, a conference. Well, I suppose they're few and far between. The physical conferences are few and far between right now. But uh, yeah, you, if you have an event, you can issue tickets. People can pay for tickets over Lightning. And then you can use the same plugin then to register participants when they arrive at your event. So we've got a couple of extensions and we want more. Um, so we're making available three, three million sat bounties um, for extensions. If you're interested in making an extension and you have an idea for an extension, um, then pop over to this, uh, to this chat uh, this weekend um, and then tell us about your extension idea. Work in a group or work on your own if you want. We tried to make... Um, the ability to build your own extensions on LMBits as easy as possible. Um, so, and we'll, we'll be on hand as well to help if you need a little bit of help. Uh, but yeah, you can work in a group, you can work on your own, make your own LMBits extension, and then hopefully get one of these um, uh, 3 million SAT bounties. So yeah, you need to, first you'll need to pop into the chat and talk to the communities, see if they like the idea for the extension. If they like the idea, don't be afraid of proposing dumb ideas as well. You know, sometimes from dumb ideas, good ideas grow. Um, uh, and then we can bookmark that uh, bounty for you and then hopefully you can get that thing knocked out in the next couple of days and you can receive the, the bounty, you and your team or you, your, your, you and yourself can receive that bounty. Uh, LMBits is built on Python. It uses Vue.js and Quasar for the front end stuff. Um, there's plenty of uh, resources, tutorials and whatnot on YouTube on how to do that. So I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to install um, LMBits, well the, the, the branch which we've been, the new branch of LMBits. In fact, before I do that, I should probably show you the old branch of, um, of uh, LMBits. Um, so if we just go back to here. Right, so uh, this is the original MVP wallet which we made, okay? So you could you know run it on your own little server, you can access it on your phone, it looks pretty nice, it's mobile ready, send receive money, and then you have these extensions um, which you can, you know, build the wallet out and build the functionality of the wallet out without cluttering it initially with too much stuff. Um, in this original branch, the those extensions which I mentioned work and they work pretty well. The branch which we're working on now, those extensions don't work and don't really work well. That's what we're going to be working on. We're going to be making the the, uh, the extensions which are already there, um, updating them with the new sort of front end GUI. So the branch which you want to be working on is broken bits. Um, you can use as well a multiple of funding sources behind LM bits. That was kind of the point. Uh, so you could use your open node, you could use LNTX bar, you could use like C Lightning. If you're running this on a blitz, you can use LND through the GARPC. Um, I still need to update the LMP one actually to the new um uh so it yeah, so it works with the with the new update. So I'll do that as well today. Um so yeah, some good options there for, for payment sources. I'll show you how easy it is to install the uh, the branch. So where are we? So we have, first we want to clone the git. Um, 
I'm now clone into a folder called LM Bits. Now my internet is very, very painfully slow. Um, so this will probably go a little bit faster for you. Then we need to CD into the folder. Then we're going to do pipenv install. So we're going to install the dependencies. Um, you might need to install pipenv, you know, like sudo at get pipenv, but we'll just do pipe and install. It's already pipenv is already installed. Uh, dev. That's going to install some of those dependencies. If you want to check the dependencies, which you always should do, uh, that's in requirements, um, and they're, they're all in there. Most of them are, you know, tiny little um, uh, libraries. Some of them are a little bit bigger, like Flask, for example. So you know the the system is running on uh, a Flask server, but Flask itself is very very lean. So we've kept this as lean as possible, um, so it doesn't consume resources on your, you know, your 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 Raspberry Blitz, for example. Um, so we'll let that tick away for a moment. That might take a moment. Now we're going to pipe, whoop, pipe and the, ah, before we do that, in fact, there are some environment variables which we need to set for our funding source. Um, so, uh, shall I show you in here? No, I'll show you in the actual folder itself. So, if we go to our LM bits, here we go. And then if we look at dot env dot example, no. Um, there's a whole bunch of variables and depending on what funding source you use. So for example, you know, if we want to use the, um, what should we use? I'm going to be using, say if we want to use the open node wallet, um, you, you, you know, type in open node wallet there, and then you put in your open node, um, admin key and your invoice key generated from open node and then run LM bits. And that's what it will use for its funding source. Um, I'm going to be using LND, um, which I'm actually running from uh, Zap. So I've got Zap running. I'm going to access its Neutrino wallet. Um, it's Neutrino node, sorry, uh, for LND. Uh, and I'm, rather than fill out those credentials and expose all my keys and stuff, I'm just going to copy it from an old version of LND bits I've got. Uh, and I'm just going to paste that in there. So once you've filled in your credentials, you'll need to save it as .env. Uh, Obviously, fill in your credentials depending on your, your, your funding source. And then um, then we can launch the environment. And it has access to those variables. There we go. Um, now I'm going to do flask run. There we are, cool. Uh, and if I go here, there we are, brilliant. So LM Bits is running. Uh, I have got some like advertising space here, which you, you could go in and delete if you wanted to, if it annoys you. I might delete it. It's, so these are all other free and open source type projects. So I just sort of chucked them in there for a bit of fun. You know, if you're running a custodial solution, you could obviously put your own adverts in there if you wanted to. Uh, so what should we call this? Um, let's call it Fulmo. So we're gonna make a new wallet. Cool, so we made a new wallet. Look how easy that is. And then we've got all that API information here. Look at that, lovely. Um, and there's even like curl examples and whatever else. Um, you can receive, let's see if my, if it's connected to my LND. There it is, made an invoice. It's pretty easy to make an invoice. Um, you can send as well if you're running with some mobile or even on your laptop, on your webcam, you can use the camera to, to you know, read invoices. It's pretty cool. If you make a new wallet, uh, that has its own API keys as well. It's pretty cool. So the bit we're going to be concentrating on is extensions. Now, in here, we have uh, three exam three extensions, none of which uh, work. I think TPOS is on its way to working, 
um, but it really is just a, a form. So this is to be able to create a POS. That doesn't, we can't actually create the POS just yet, but we should be able to by you know a little bit later on today. Um, if you open your LM bits install and you go to extensions, there's a folder called example, um, and you can build your extension in there. Uh, and obviously using ignore this joust one. Uh, obviously using the other um, extensions uh, as examples. So you can see the the files are pretty limited. You've got um, uh, a views file, views.api. Maybe I should open this in um, Sublime. I think I probably should. We can have a good look at it. Right, so uh, yeah, reload one. Reload, reload, reload. There we are. Right, so where are we? Bum, 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 bum. So here's my LM bits folder. Um, let's close everything up so we see what's going on. Right, so here's LM bits. So I'm going to go to extensions and then I'm going to go to um, example. And then uh, in example, you'll see there's a template. So this is like your, your template page. Um, and then there's um, this is config.json.example. Uh, if we get rid of the example bit here, which we'll do here. Uh, so if I rename that now to config.json, and I'm going to have to relaunch um, LM bits last run. There we are. So now, hopefully, there we are. Cool. We've got our example extension there, blah, blah, blah. So if I enable the extent, example extension and I open it, okay, you'll see here there's some information on some of the um, frameworks we use. So we use Flask, we use Vue.js, and we use the Quasar framework. Um, there's a magical G which you can call uh, from your extension, and using that you can access all the wallet um, information. So if you make an extension, um, it'll obviously need to talk to one of the wallets, um, and send and receive funds from that wallet. Um, so you can access that information from the, the magical G. Um, if we have a little look now in Sublime. Okay, that's a bit of that. So views. So this is where you uh, put in the, um, the, the Python script for, you know, what's going to happen in your, um, in this page when, when the user goes into the, into this page. Um, and then there's that G being passed uh, to to the extension. Okay, um, there's an also uh, API um, here, so you can you can actually make your own API calls, um, which people uh, you can people will be able to access then um, your extension over over an API as opposed to through its um, through its GUI. The schema. This is how your database is built. So you create your extensions table and variables you need here. So if we have a look at another extension, so say we look at the, the point of sale exam, uh, extension and we look at the schema for the point of sale extension. Okay, so the, the, the database which I tell it to build for me um, uh, has like a, a key. So it should always have like a key, a primary key. Um, so you could just really just copy and paste this. In fact, so I could copy that now. I can go into my example I go to my schema, I can paste that in there, um, uh, save it, and then if I, I, think I suppose if I just go out, if I just refresh this, and then I open this up, I think, I'm not sure, I can probably check and see if that's made the database for me. Has that made a database for me? Example, there we are, cool. So it actually made a little database for me where it can store the information, it's pretty clever. Um, so yeah, trying not to confuse you lot. Uh, so yeah, so we've got um, in this database, we've got a name, we've got a, a unique, uh, so that'll be, um, uh, uh, I don't know, say if I was filling out a form, um, that could be the, the name of uh, something I'm making and then that could be a unique um, reference for it. Um, and then there's another field and another field and another field. So I've just got a bunch of text fields and then a primary key. Um, so you build your database from there, uh, depending on what you're, you're making, of course. Uh, there's also a readme section, so you can fill out a, a readme, um, uh, which we can then use on the GitHub. 
and um, that's pretty much it. I mean, you could just literally copy and paste that examples folder um, or, or just use the example folder and then start building your extension from there. Um, for those of you who know how to use Vue.js and Quasar, you, you know, if you're willing to help people out and help groups out on the on the LM bits uh, chat, that'd be cool. Um, and then just see what you know extensions you can come up with and what extensions you can build. Um, it'd be exciting to see. You know, if someone wants to come up with an LN URL pay extension, that would be amazing because that's something which which we, which we really want to start playing around with is the LN URL pay. Um, if anyone knows what that is, uh, and you also know how to use these frameworks. Um, if you do, then that's probably easy money for you. You could knock that out in a few hours, I reckon. So, yeah, so have fun. Good luck. We'll be in the chat. Um, remember, it's the Broken Bits uh, branch, which you're going to be working on. And then hopefully we'll have this Broken Bits branch finished at the end of the weekend. And we'll be able to launch it as the new update. And then people will be able to download it and you run it on their blitzes. And then more and more people will be able to play around with the software we're building and the community's building. So thanks for listening. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Any questions, pop along to the chat and have a little chat with us. Cheers.